This is a presentation from the Wapanka Historical Society. Well, good evening, everyone. For those who don't know me, I'm Tracy Ferrant, and I have been the director at the Wapaka Historical Society now for just over four years. And my family and I moved here about 10 years ago um, to Wapaka. And um, I have grown to love and just have a great interest um, in Wapaka history and Chain of Lakes history as, as that's intertwined with Wapakas. And um, we were really excited to talk about uh, the, the history of Main Street. We talk about a lot of little pieces about Wapaka, but it's fun to at least kind of reminisce about how it all kind of got started on Main Street. So this photo is from the 1930s, and uh, as you can see, it's from taken from up here on the hill, but um, Dane's Hall is on the right. There's the old firehouse right on the left there where the firehouse apartments are now. Um, but Bill and I were remarking earlier today that even the hill in that picture looks different than it does today. Um, the road used to go through, there's just a path there. Now there's a larger piece there with a parking lot. Um, so just those little changes too have changed quite a bit over the years. So I wanted to start my, out my presentation by talking a little about the Wapaka Historical Society and kind of what we do and our role in all this. Um, our organization was formed in, in 1953, and actually the first meeting that we had of the Historical Society was actually held at the Fire Hall, across where the Firehouse Apartments are now. And um, when they were formed, it was formed um, as a nonprofit to preserve Wapaka's history and the Chain of Lakes history as well. And, um, and also to be able to share that with the public and also tourists that would come into our area. Um, that's an important piece to what we do. And we do this today, and we have done it since um, 1953, through um, the collections we have at all four of our buildings. Um, so we operate the Historic Depot, which Bill mentioned. We operate the Holly Center, which is in the old library building. And we operate the Hutchinson House and King Cottage out at South Park. So all those building ha buildings have our collections in them. We also do programming and events, and a lot of that we do at no charge. Um, we see that as our mission and our service to the community to tell people and spread that history of Wapaka. And um, I mentioned the research center we also have at the Holly Center, in term and that includes both family history and local history. And then also we work closely with the city, um, especially coming up here on the Main Street Project next year. We've worked closely with them. And then also with other local organizations, the Arts Board, Arts and Culture Network, um, other organizations that um, have, been, have a big role in Wapaka as well. So part of what we do too at the Historical Society is not only preserve the objects that we have in our collections, but also those stories. And um, I think my favorite part of having people come visit me at the Holly Center or come and ask questions is those stories that people tell about Wapaka and their memories. And I'm sure as we go through the presentation tonight too, it'll spark a lot of memories um, for you as well. Um, I want to start from the beginning to at least give you a sense as to, <clears throat> excuse me, a, a sense as to how Wapaka started. So 100,000 years ago, this area was covered in glaciers. So as those glaciers moved out, we have the rivers and the hills and all those things formed. And about 10,000 years ago, the ancestors of who would be the Menominee Indians today were starting to make their way over to what is now Wapaka County. And the, eventually, the Menominee ended up occupying about 10 million acres, which includes Wapaka County here. And they moved, when the Menominee were here, they would move from their villages on Taylor and Otter Lakes and they would have Indian trails that would come often over here where they would have camps and often on the Wapaka River or as what we know as Wapaka River. And so a lot of the trails and systems that they had set up are what the early settlers ended up taking to find Wapaka in those early years. So the first white settlers came to Wisconsin in the early 1800s and namely they came first to Green Bay and that was easily accessible through the waterways. And eventually people were starting to have an interest in lands around here and throughout the rest of Wisconsin. And so by the 1830s, they were starting to look at other areas of our state. So over the next 20 years, in a series of seven treaties, the Menominee Indians ceded all of their land to the federal government. And that last treaty in 1848 was the one that included the land that is now Wapaka. So in 1848 also is when Wisconsin became a state. So people started coming more to our state, started looking in these uncharted territories, which included Wapaka. 
And so in June 1849 is when we first, first see the settlers come to Apaca. So we call them the Vermonters. They're five men from Vermont. They had come to Plymouth, Wisconsin, and they decided they had heard about the falls. And um, so they set out from Plymouth, Wisconsin on trails, came over to this area here and found the falls. And so what we know as the falls today are where many of the dams used to be. And so when they came, they saw the power on the river and their ability, hopefully, to harness it through building mills here. So those five Vermonters also in June 1849 met up with another settlement that came shortly after them, and they are the Chandler Settlement, and they settled out by the airport. Um, so they were kind of separate, and you can still see remnants of the Chandler Settlement. I believe there's a small um, cemetery out there that's on private land, um, but so they were out near where the airport is today. So that first fall, they, the Vermonters set up settlement here, and it would have been right by Rasmussen Park here, right on the river, right over here by the Danes Hall. And those first houses were really crude brush and sticks and things, just basically to make, through, make it through the fall and winter so that they, that next year, could start building and thinking about building mills. And between 1849 and 1852, those Vermonters staked 83 claims here in Wapaka area. Now, I mentioned the water power, so I have a picture of what is the Water Street Dam, and um, the, um, so there were four dams on the Wapaka River. There was, um, and two of them still exist. So there's the Elm River, or the Elm Street Dam, which is where the power company was, and that is upstream. There's the Water Street Dam here. There was also one on Shearer Street, which is over in the Third Ward, over by Oldborn. There was a mill out there. And then there was one over on Churchill Street, and um, that one, and then the one on Elm Street still exist. And the one on Churchill Street is um, by Shannox um, Foundry, and, they, and that is a private dam now. And then there was also a fifth dam out at the Wapaka Brickyard. So those early settlers, and then also later people who came to Wapaka really understood that the water provided um, a means to make money and also to, to build the settlement here. And actually, I think, this picture, though I have Water Street on here, I'm pretty sure that's the Elm Street Dam, if anybody else knows for sure. But I'm pretty sure I did it wrong. So <laughs> now that I'm looking at it, I actually went out and, and you can still walk out there. I don't know if any of you, anybody has walked out there before, but um, you can still kind of get out to that dam out there and the old power station that was out there. So why the name Wapaka? This map shows, and this is from 1851, you can see the settlement here, and the falls of Wapaka. And um, originally, they had it with two C's, as if you can see on that map there. And there have been numerous thoughts as to what Wapaka means over the years. And we've heard everything from pale or clear water, to white sand bottom, to tomorrow, to um, a person's name. And we've done quite a bit of research on it recently and have worked with um, the Menominee elders and also with UW-Stevens Point to kind of figure out exactly what that would have meant. And we had a speaker a couple years ago that helped us um, talk through that. And he said, as far as he understands, as being, as, and he spoke Menominee, um, that it meant the quality of the light or morning light on the water. And it denotes a place, not a name of a person. Um, so that kind of gives us some clarity. And it, they were referring to, obviously, the river here. And an early fur trader, William Powell, believed that, that Wapaka, or the Indian name that it was given here, meant daybreak or the dawning of tomorrow and eventually the French translated that into tomorrow which is the reason that part of the Wapaka River going into Portage County is now called the Tomorrow River. Um, as a note, in 1851 this village applied to the federal government to establish a U.S. post office and they sent in, you had to send in basically paperwork to have that named and they sent in the name Wapaka and they beat the next town over by a day. And um, the next town over was called Tomorrow Rivers Settlement. And um, that town is now Wyawega. But um, had the mail not gone out, this could be Wyawega, and they could be Wapaka, or a different name. Who knows? Or it could be the Falls. Who knows? <laughs> so it was a pretty close, close uh, naming. So the first years of Wapaka, with those first settlers, um, was a lot of just kind of building the community. The first boarding house was built, um, was set up in 1849, that very first year. The first sawmill then was built in 1850, and the first grist mill in 1851. 
So um, obviously they wanted to get the homes and buildings built first, and then the a grist mill built second. Um, otherwise, they were they were um, traveling a day to go and grind any kind of um, any kind of grains or anything else. Um, and that by building that grist mill, really they could start forming a community here. So in 1851, there were about 100 settlers here in town. And Wapaka County then was established in February of 1851. And then official land sales began in February 1853. So there were already people here staking claims, but those official land sales began a couple years later. So the building of Main Street. So those first settlers recognized that the river really was the most important piece to Wapaka in the beginning. And so they saw the river as the perfect place to build a settlement. And that meant not only businesses, but also residential. And this picture shows what would be the east side of the Wapaka River, and this is before it was rerouted. So it looks a little different. But if you can see way over on the left, you can see some of the mills sitting up on the river, and that would be right over here on Water Street. And then you can see it's mostly residential, and they recognized pretty early on that the landscape over on this side was much better for building um, a main street or a business area. So the other big, big development in the early, early years was that Wapaka became the county seat. So in 1853, Wapaka was named the county seat, and um, originally the very first place that was named the county seat was Mukwa. And Mukwa is the little community right before you get to New London in Wapaka County, and so originally that was going to be the county seat. Well, Wapaka ended up kind of putting its name in, and they ended up getting the county seat, not without much controversy. And eventually, not for a couple years, did um, the Wisconsin Supreme Court finally have to decide and say Wapaka is the county seat in Wapaka County. So, um, but for all intents and purposes, it was the county seat since 1853. So the first courthouse was built, in, or was used in 1853 through 1855, and that was called Gothic Hall. And Gothic Hall was not only the county courthouse, but it was also a school, it was also a church, um, and it sat on Jefferson Street, basically where Bank First is today. And then in 1855, the city built, or the county built, a new courthouse, which is pictured here. And this is a picture from the Wisconsin Historical Society, um, which actually I had never seen before. We don't have this one in our collection. But it's a wooden frame building right on Courthouse Square. And this land was actually already reserved as public land. So they put the courthouse right on public land there. And this picture is from um, 1870. And something is going on at the courthouse that day. And um, so it kind of provides a kind of an interesting look at Wapaka. Not much is going on on that side of Main Street. Um, and that courthouse was used until 1882. So more people began settling in the community once the land opened up and then with Wapaka being the county seat. And it was established, Wapaka was established as a village in 1857. And at that time, the village started setting up some basic ordinances. So they set up a fire company, they set up police services, and then, like I said, some basic ordinances just to make sure the village ran correctly. The other thing that started happening was a commercial district started building along Main Street. So this is facing on South Main Street, so you can see the fence where the county courthouse is, or courthouse square is. And all those buildings started going up around the courthouse, knowing that that was kind of the, the um, the, the, the busy piece of Main Street at the time. And all those buildings, I should say most of those buildings, I see one brick one, um, most of them were wooden frame buildings. And they, they housed general stores and trade shops, there's a confectionery, um, so there were a variety of businesses. Now most of those businesses offered handmade goods, so locally made items. Um, by, by, you know, about 20 years later or so, when as ready-made goods were more available, and could get here into town, then a lot of those businesses sold those as well. But the idea of a handmade good um, still carried on for quite, quite a few years here in Wapaka. By the 1860s, a cemetery and a public school were built here in Wapaka. And um, the other piece of this picture that I really like, not only because it's just, it looks so different than what Main Street, South Main Street looks like today, but you've got a ton of horses and carriages along the street there. And you can see the new trees had just been planted um, by the courthouse. This is another picture of Main Street in Wapaka um, in 1870, same year. And this, I think, was taken, it looks like, taken from um, a church steeple on the corner of Badger and South Main Street. 
So kind of looking down onto me. So on the bottom left is um, the Lewis house, and then the one next to it is a livery, and that is exactly where basically Simpsons and um, Salt and Belly and the Rosa Theater are today. So it kind of gives you an idea as to what we're looking at. Um, so then, yeah, then you're looking up um, onto North Main there as well. Doesn't it? It does look a lot higher. <laughs> um, this is one last picture from 1870, and this is kind of a zoomed in picture of those buildings that we saw on South Main Street. And um, the neat thing about this picture, too, is you might notice that there's actually cattle on South Main Street there. And um, <laughs> so for many years, you were allowed to bring your cattle downtown. And um, that changed in 1890 when the city finally said, we have to stop allowing you to bring your cows downtown because it's causing accidents on the sidewalks and streets. So they, um, that stopped. But um, this is a neat picture, just kind of a, a, a reminder that, uh, yeah, you used to be able to bring your livestock downtown to Main Street when you were shopping or when you were going down to the courthouse. Oh, and the, the other thing I want to mention is the board sidewalks. You can see in the background there, too. So you've got the wooden sidewalks, and then you've got the, um, the hitching posts, too. So not only did the buildings on Main Street start to build, uh, or to start to grow, uh, but the ones on the side streets did as well. So this is East Fulton Street, and this is Jen's Hanson Wagon and Carriage Shop, which is still there on East Fulton. And this was built in 1868, and Hanson named his shop the Live and Let Live Shop and operated it until his death in 1902. Two years before that, he actually built the building that's west of this, and that he used that as a warehouse. And then it later served as an agricultural implement dealership, and then an automobile dealership. And when it was the automobile dealership, they built the store, or the building next to it, which I believe today is the thrift store. Which, when you think about that, kind of makes sense if you look at that building. Um, and this building itself then, through the years, then it was an arcade, it was a snack shop. And then in the 90s, Terrence Martin and Stephen McBain purchased it, and they restored it into an office building, which is what it is today. And then T-Dubs is down on the lower level on the other side. So in 1871, Wilpaca experienced its greatest growth yet when the railroad came. And um, the railroad linked central Wisconsin to Wilpaca. Wilpaca was able to ship in and ship out goods. And it would become particularly important um, when the potato industry began. So in 1875, thanks to the, the um, railroad and the growing downtown, Wapaka's population grew to 2,000 people already. And this time, about 1875, for another 25 years, is when we see just a great growth in both the downtown but just in the city in general. And in the 1870s, the downtown be began to take quite a different look. There were three large fires downtown in Wapaka during that time, and they destroyed most of the wooden frame buildings um, that were on South and North Main Street. The big fire on February 19, 1877, destroyed these buildings on the corners, so the ones that used to be there. And um, this is where um, Main Street Marketplace is today, on the corner of um, West Fulton and North Main Street. And um, this picture is from 1904. Prior to these big fires, most of the buildings downtown were wood frame buildings. And each structure, each structure stood independently of each other. So each building had basically an alleyway between. So animals ran through, there was trash thrown out between the buildings. Um, it was a pretty big fire hazard too. So after those buildings burned down, the majority of those buildings were replaced with brick buildings. And a lot of the brick came from the Wapaka Brickyard here in Wapaka. Oh, and then one other thing I wanted to mention, too, um, is that the brick, when the brick buildings were built, too, then they would have party walls. So instead of those buildings being structurally apart, they were all put together. And so some of the buildings actually share a brick wall, and other ones have their brick walls up against each other. But this would um, prevent fires from going down the street, basically burning down all the buildings. Um, but it also took away those alleyways in between the buildings. So I mentioned the other streets growing. This is Union Street. Um, looking east, and this is from 1870, 
And Perkins Art Gallery is the one you probably noticed the most right in the middle there. And um, Perkins Art Gallery and then the two buildings to its right are where Chase Bank, well the former Chase Bank, um, and its parking lot are today. And you can see where the Courthouse Square is with their fence, their fence there. The other thing that's interesting about this picture is if you're familiar with the E.L. Brown Law Office and the Mead Bank here in town that are still on Jefferson Street, these two buildings in the pictures look very much like those buildings. And so it kind of gives you an idea that that architecture and those types of buildings were, um, were popular at that time. Here's another look down um, Union Street to Main Street. So this is actually looking down west or down East Union um, from Jefferson. So you're looking down. So the courthouse square already has a different look. That fence is really neat. It, it's too bad it's not around anymore, but you can tell, took down the picket fence, nice new fence. The trees have grown up a little bit, and a lot of the buildings now on Main Street have started to be replaced by those brick buildings. And then you can also still see some of the wooden boardwalks too. This, um, there were also many bars and restaurants on Main Street and on the side streets. And Nelson's Bar was one of them on Union Street, and this is where Weasels is today. And this picture was taken in, 19, in the 1920s. And, um, oh, I apologize. This is on West Union Street. Kane Garage is where Matthews Tires is today. And um, so Kane, uh, Kane Garage Machine Shop, this is from 1912, and that area right there too had quite a few machine shops, implement dealers, um, that was kind of what that area was known for, um, for quite a while there. Jefferson Street also had several businesses grow up there, um, and A.M. Hansen owned both of these buildings. So on the right is A.M. Hansen's machine shop, and that was built in 1907, and today it's Doran's Hardware. And then the one on the left is the garage, and that building was built in 1900, and it'll soon be an antique shop, from what I understand. So that one is, will be preserved as well. And actually, before it became, was gonna become the antique shop now, from what I understand, it was one of the longest, it was one of the, one of the only buildings in the state that um, was actually a continuous um, automobile garage or dealer. So as the city and the county grew, so did the county's work in Wapaka. And in 1882, they decided to build a new courthouse. So the three-story courthouse was built and, um, on, on Courthouse Square. And um, you can actually see, you know, we mentioned Gothic Hall as the first courthouse um, in those early years. And Gothic Hall, I believe, is the building that is sitting to the back right of that picture. Um, so there it sits, basically, where Bank First is, Bank First is today. Now, the second courthouse, that wooden frame building, didn't get torn down. It got moved. So in 1882, it was actually moved to this site here, where the Danes Hall is, and served as their first building. Um, they had purchased this lot and moved that building here. And it served as the Danes Hall until 1894 when this building was built. And then it was moved down Water Street. And for a while, it was Dinah's Exchange, which, is, which it is in this picture. And then it was a bargain center. And then it was torn down in 1965. So another great accomplishment for the city at this time was the construction of a city hall fire department. The original proposal actually proposed that the city hall was to be built in 1885, and it was voted down. And finally, in 1894, it was approved to be built. And the new city hall was going to include a fire station, offices for city officials, and also room for a police department. Um, this photograph is from the 1920s and shows some of the horse-drawn um, fire equipment that the fire station had. At this time, too, the city accomplished quite a few public works projects, including the street and sidewalks. You'll notice in this picture that the sidewalks are now all different and all paved. And um, the city streets were paved with gravel from the local granite quarry here in Wapaka. And the city even owned its own stone crusher for that job to do all the streets. And then the Wapaka Electric Light Association was formed in April 1886, and they installed the dam and power plant and soon after the first electric light on July 14, 1886. There were frequent outages in, the, in those early years though, but by 1900, electric lights and telephones were a staple of the downtown area. This picture, you can see the trolley tracks as well. 
So when the electric company reorganized in 1898, they started calling themselves the Wapaka Electric Light and Railway Company. And they began construction on a trolley system from the depot on Oak Street all the way out to the Wisconsin Veterans Home and the Grandview Hotel, which was out on the Chain of Lakes. Here's a picture of some workers working on the, the trolley track, and this is going from South Main Street and curving onto West Fulton Street there. And we've talked about how when they, when they do the street project next year, we don't doubt that they're going to dig up some of those trolley tracks still underneath. Um, they did take some out a number of years ago too, but there's still some underneath that road. So the trolleys were actually used year round, and the Wapaka Electric Light and Railway Company had special covered, a uh, special covered winter car that was used for travel during the winter months, so there it is. And um, this photo is neat because, well, from 1908, it's taken here from the hill by Danes Hall, um, but it's got the trolley, the winter car, it's got some horse-drawn carriages or sleighs out on the road, and um, it's just a neat picture of, of Main Street. And you can see that, that string that Bill was talking about too that ran from here to the fire, uh, fire hall across the street. So as a note, in later years, the, um, after the company had been sold and they were renamed, the Electric Light and Power Company moved into the Whittington Building on North Main Street. And um, that's located on the corner of North Main and Session Street. And the neat thing about looking at these pictures, too, is just seeing all the different types of businesses that were downtown, especially, too, on North Main Street. Um, in this picture, you have a credit and insurance company, you have a jeweler, you have a beer distributor, you have a radio and Westinghouse repair shop, cleaners, and then there's a restaurant, too, and then you can see the Danes Hall around the corner. So another public project downtown, which still is around today, um, was the bandstand. And it was built in 1898 by a local carpenter named Simon Jensen. And the original bandstand stood on a higher foundation, you can kind of tell from this picture. Um, but basically looked the same, had wood shingles around the base. This was the first publicly funded recreational facility in Wapaka. And it was built as a, as a performance area for the Wapaka Community Band, which was formally organized in 1894. Um, there had been several other bands um, starting after the Civil War in the 1860s. But the community band finally made their home at the bandstand um, those, few, those many years later. And then um, performances kind of dwindled in the mid 20th century, but um, the band still performs there now during the summer months. So though the downtown was growing and changing, and we talked about those ready-made goods, um, many of the same trade shops still would be operating in Wapaka, and they thrived for many years. Um, this is true of Effie Lund's harness shop on North Main Street. And Frederick Lund opened the harness shop in 1876. And after his death in 1919, his son-in-law continued the business. Then another son-in-law took over the business in 1939. And it actually remained a harness shop until 1956. And at that time then, the Assembly of God bought it and made it into a book and stationery shop. And then it was renovated in, or they renovated it. And then later on, it was a hobby shop. And then now today, it's framing by Preston on North Main Street. And this photo was actually taken in about 1900. Oh, the other thing I, this, the other neat thing about this picture, and I kind of mentioned it on the slide, is on the right, that white awning, you can kind of read it, and it says A.J. Holly's Undertaking. Um, so that A.J. Holly's um, original, well, not their first business, but the biggest one, downtown uh, Main Street there was um, at North Main right there. So businesses were expanding downtown, but the major impact then toward the end of the 19th century, going into the early 20th century, was the potato industry. So in 1851, the first potatoes were planted in Wapaka County, and they were noted for having really good eating quality. And the sandy soils near Dayton Township and then going into Portage County were exceptionally good for growing potatoes. So when the railroad came the next year, 1872, the first shipment of potatoes went out of Wapaka, and by 1887, 500,000 bushels of potatoes were being shipped out of Wapaka, and more from towns like Sheridan and Farmington and Dayton. And farmers could count on yielding anywhere from 300 to 600 bushels of potatoes per acre. In about 1890, there was a fungus that ruined a lot of the wheat crop around here, so a lot of farmers ended up going toward the potato crop. And so by 1910, Wapaka was known as the potato capital of the world, which is yeah, pretty unbelievable. 
Um, it was the largest potato shipper in the United States. And in that same year, in 1910, Wapaka had 15 brokers, buyers, and shippers of potatoes in Wapaka. And bidding would actually take place on Main Street and other downtown streets as the buyers bid on each load. And they actually set the prices um, by Wapaka's potato prices here. So one way the community celebrated this potato industry is by holding a potato bake. And the first potato bake was held in 1908. And that included exhibits of farm and garden products, kind of, kind of like a fair. Um, they had potatoes and barbecue beef to eat. They had a parade. They had a balloon ascension. Um, and then, like I said, in 1910, Wapaka was the potato capital of the world. So this was a huge event for them. And in 1912, the potato bake also included um, tug of war challenges, an aviation show, horse pulls, and even an illuminated parade at, the, at night. So it was quite a big deal. This is a picture from 1908 of the first Wapaka potato bake. And um, there's a couple neat things in this picture. You can see the banner hanging over the, the road, and it is a giant potato. And, <laughs> and it says, on the sign, it says, Wapaka, potato is king. And um, so you can just tell how those big events just brought tons of people downtown, and they still do today. Um, the other neat thing about this picture is you can kind of see on Main Street there's a white trolley-like car, and that is the trolley's baggage car. And um, that is, um, we do have that at the depot um, in our carriage house there, or our car barn, and um, it's fully restored. So um, come out to the depot and check that out. But that's a neat piece that, um, there it is in the picture. Um, the other thing is that th these types of business or these types of events brought a lot of business to downtown stores. Local businesses often capitalized on these events, and Christie's Department Store, which was on Main and Union Streets, offered discounts in the store if you brought in your potato sales receipts. They all often had monetary prizes too for like the best potato, the biggest potato. Um, so businesses locally were very uh, very enthusiastic about um, Wapaka's place in the potato industry. This is the potato bake in 1912, and um, this is one of the last years it was held. And um, after World War I, the potato industry floundered, and um, the industry just wasn't the same in Wapaka. Um, and a lot of farmers ended up going toward dairy and feed crops then. Um, but the potatoes are still grown, and they still continue to be grown um, because of the good soil conditions here. So festivals in general were an important piece to, um, an important part of bringing our community together in those early years, but it also brought business downtown. And this picture, I'm pretty sure, is from the Turkey Trot. And so that was a Thanksgiving celebration they had. And this shows North Main Street. You can see the Danes Hall up on the left there. And this picture is from 1917. And this was the first year of the Turkey Trot, I believe. And this only lasted a couple years namely because they dropped live turkeys off the building where this picture is taken. So, um, yeah, so they would drop the live turkey down, you were supposed to catch it, and then you could take it home for Thanksgiving dinner. It was not a well thought out event. Um, <laughs> so here's the picture, looking down on Main Street, all the people gathered, and then here's the guy ready to drop the turkey. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it's kind of a sad thing. So, <laughs> so it, it took Wapaka's leaders about 20 years to resurrect the turkey trot. So this is in 1939, and um, they brought the turkey trot back, no more live turkeys, and instead they gave away free turkeys um, that were all ready to go for Thanksgiving um, every 15 minutes downtown. And local businesses sponsored each of those turkeys. And the great thing was people stayed downtown all day long because they wanted to see if they won a turkey. So they had people downtown all day. Here's the stage, I believe, where they would probably be announcing the turkey winners. And um, this is taken on East Union Street. And um, you can see the old car dealership in the back left there um, on East Union. And you can kind of see the hotel uh, division over there, too, in the back. Parades were a common event downtown as well, especially during the war years. Um, this photograph was taken in 1917, likely at a Memorial Day parade. And um, the neat thing about parade pictures and, a, and any kind of event downtown is that you can really see the local businesses and see what was downtown and how Wapaka changed through the years. Um, when we were doing some research on some theaters that used to be here in town, we could not find a picture anywhere of one of the theaters. And I just happened to be looking at a, this picture 
And then all of a sudden I realized that the, the building with the flag on top is the Lyric Theater. And that it did not exist very long. Actually, the next year it was renovated and closed. And, um, but you can kind of see it's the one with the flag and it has a, a, a sign on the front that says Lyric on it. So that's the neat thing about some of these pictures is you really get a good glimpse of, of what happens downtown. So during the 19th century, or the late 19th century, women's groups and fraternal organizations also flourished in Wapaka, and they settled on Main Street. The local women's Christian temperance union organized in the 1880s, and they opened the first public library, though it wasn't free because you had a yearly fee for that, um, and it was in a photographic gallery on Main Street. Two women's clubs existed in Wapaka for many years, and one of which started to organize a free public library. So when the Christian temperance union closed, they ended up donating and selling most of their books to the women's club. And so the women's club in 1900 opened the very first free public library in the upper room at 208 South Main Street, which at the time was also the post office on the lower level. And this is where Evans Title Company is now on South Main Street. And this picture is from 1903, so you can see the mail cars or mail wagons out, out front there. So in 1913, they were outgrowing that library space on that second floor. So the women's group secured a Carnegie grant and they built the Wapaka Public Library. It was completed in 1914 and it served as a library until 1993. And this picture is taken at about 1914, shortly after it was opened. Um, you can see the brand new sidewalks and everything too. Pretty much looks like it does today. So today the Wapaka Historical Society, that's where our main offices are. And um, it's, a, it's a wonderful building. And while this is not really part of Main Street, at least to us on Main Street, on South Main, it's to, to us an extension of Main Street um, with us there in the post office and now the Chamber of Commerce. Um, we are an extension of Main Street. So I told, Bill mentioned before, I do have a little piece about the Danes Hall. So Danish immigrants to Apaca also formed a society and they formed it on, on Main Street. Their first meeting was in 1877 and the Danes Home Society purchased this lot and then after several other locations trying to figure out what they were going to do with this land, they um, moved that old courthouse building to this property in 1882. And that would have been that first, uh, that would have been the year also that they were formed as the Danes Home Society. So they were an organization formed for social and literary purposes. And then they ended up building then the Danes Hall that we're in tonight in 1894 for, at a cost of $6,853. And the building was designed by notable architect William Waters from Oshkosh. And then in years after the Dean's Home Society moved out, um, this building was a machine shop and it was an antique store. I know when I moved here it was an antique store, um, but it's been a fixture on North Main Street for um, over 100 years now. Fraternal groups also found a home downtown. Um, after that fire I mentioned earlier in the 1870s, the Masonic Lodge built the Masonic Building at 105 and 107 um, North Main Street, and that's so it was built in 1877, and it's the building right to the right of the, the National Tea Company there, where you can see the Stratton sign. The Masonic Lodge has been on the second floor of that building ever since. Um, the other interesting thing about that building is that the lower level has almost been a pharmacy the entire time, too. Um, the Bailey Pharmacy was, the, was in there in 1877, and then it was um, taken over by C.A. Spencer in 1884. And the interesting thing about C.A. Spencer was that he gained quite the reputation um, for selling a chemical that killed the potato beetle here, and with the potato industry so huge here. It was an important product. Um, it was called Paris Green, and it was an arsenic compound, and it was later banned because it was so toxic, but he liked to, he prided himself on selling the most Paris Green um, of any other person here in the Wapaka area. So in 1914 then, Frank Stratton relocated his pharmacy from the old First National Bank building, who was originally over there, to this building, and um, Stratton's has been there ever since. So the, the building, um, this building here, also housed the Knights of Pythias, another um, organization, and they were in the third floor, and um, they called that Castle Hall. So they were there for um, quite a while. Um, but this building is now known basically as the old First National Bank. And it's a, been a centerpiece of South Main Street for many years and still is. The building um, at the time marked growth in Wapaka, but also marked growth in the banking industry here in town. It was built in 1893 by the Wapaka County National Bank. And it was also designed by William Waters. 
So in 1906, the bank changed its name to First National Bank. But by 1910, First National Bank was floundering and another bank here in town, Old National Bank, bought the bank and moved in. So this picture is from 1911 and shows the inside of what would be Old National Bank. And um, in the 1930s, then that bank failed. And in 1934, a new First National Bank came in. And they weren't very original with the bank name. <laughs> but so the first, the first National Bank opened up in 1934 at this site. And they were there until 1973. And then they built that building on Jefferson Street, where now Bank First is. Um, and then several businesses operated out of kind of the side portion of First National Bank for many years. And that's where Stratton's got his start. Um, it started out as the Truesdale Drugstore as well. And, um, and, and they, so they were in that, that side piece. And throughout the years, you'll see different businesses um, located in that piece next to the First National Bank. So Wapaka grew quite a bit in this time, but not that much. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> when, I, when I first started the Historical Society, I saw this poster and I'm like, oh, am I, am I missing something? But I did not know about this. I'm totally missing a piece of history. And um, it didn't take me long to realize yeah, this is ridiculous. Um, <laughs> but um, no, we'll pack and never had skyscrapers. Um, but um, around this time, early 1900s, 1910s, posters were so popular. And um, Photographers were good enough at that point that they could basically put in little pieces that really didn't belong in the postcards during the um, developing process. So, um, yep, that doesn't exist. And I've seen other postcards since, and I always just kind of chuckle, because I've seen them for other Wisconsin towns and other towns in the United States and where random skyscrapers are placed in there. So that was a fad, I guess. <laughs> So the growth of the potato industry also encouraged growth of the stores downtown. Right around 1900, two department stores opened up downtown. This photo is from the early 1900s and shows the J.E. Christie department store on the corner of Main and Union Streets. Today, that is Antiques on Main and used to be the True Value Hardware. Uh, known as Christie's, the store opened in March 1904 and was owned by Joseph and Flora Christie. The store became a huge success. and. By the 1930s, though, they were struggling, and um, business had declined, and so in 1937, Carol and his wife decided to lease half the store to Gamble's, a chain hardware store. And in 1942, the family gave, decided to sell it all to the Gamble's franchise. And then in 1981, um, it, the, uh, Roger and Gloria Conan leased the building from the Christie family and opened the True Value hardware store. Christie's department store was, was known for using many promotions to draw customers to the store. And they had many, many giveaways. Um, they had commemorative plates, they had pocket mirrors, they had combs, they had glassware. So quite a few of those things are in our collection at the Historical Society. Um, and as I mentioned before, they offered discounts often during events as well. The second department store to open around 1900, and Christie's main competition, was the fair store. And Nathan Cohen first established the fair store in 1897, and he was actually first on East Union Street. The fair store was a small department store that sold household and dry goods. And then in 1904, Mr. Cohen bought out the Union Store, which was on Main Street. And that building was uh, at 112 and 114 South Main Street. And that building had been built just for the Union Store. And the Union Store was a had all sorts of different stores with, under one roof. So they all operated independently, all, almost like booths, and, um, but they were all under the Union Store. But the Union Store didn't see a ton of success, and soon after, Cohen wanted to move to Main Street, and he bought this building. So on April 7, 1905, he held a grand opening at the fair store, and he had an orchestra, he had ice cream and cake for the grand opening, and the new fair store filled the basement in both floors of the Union Store and became the largest department store in the area. So the fair store provided Wapaka with the most up-to-date goods um, and services in the early 20th century. And this is a picture of the inside of the fair store at that time. And they also were known for their gifts, their complimentary gifts with purchases. They had ruby and crystal glass, they had condiment trays, they had all sorts of things. So in 1936, the fair store went under a complete renovation. And when completed that February, the store took over the A&P grocery store that had been next door. And then they moved, the A&P moved to North Main and West Fulton Streets. 
um, where Main Street Marketplace is today. And then Fair Store made this all, they had a men's department, they had a women's department, they had shoe, millinery, course departments, they had, I mean, basically everything under one roof. So the Fair Store was highly successful downtown for 40 years, and then they had closed in December of 1939, and in 1940, um, another popular discount chain, Schultz Brothers, and then the Kroger Grocery Store moved into the old Fair Store building. So there's Schultz Brothers. So they've been, they have been, had been in Wapaka since 1926, actually. And it started at um, 106 North Main Street, which is where the Paca Pub is today. So that was their first store, and it was called the Five and Ten Cent Store. And then it moved across the street to where um, Shea Posh is today. And then eventually it replaced the Fair Store in 1940. Kroger Grocery Store came in on the one side of it, and eventually, in 1948, then Schultz Brothers bought Kroger's um, place there, and they expanded the entire store. So now they were the same size as the fair store used to be. So this is the interior of the Schultz Brothers department store. And um, each department had a bell that you could ring to get help. And you can see that there is someone literally standing in every department <laughs> waiting to help you. <laughs> Um, when the Wapaka Woods Mall was built in 1977, then the Schultz Brothers also opened another store where the Shop Co. was, um, and that was 40,000 square feet of space for them. And they maintained their downtown store at the same time, until 1988. And then in 1989, Prangy Way took over the Schultz Brothers store out by the Woods Mall. So in the early 20th century, Wapaka really grew into a modern community. One of the most significant but hidden changes at the time was the new water and sewer system. So the initial water system in Wapaka relied on the river. And a new pump house was built at Mirror Lake in 1905, and then a new sewer system was put in in 1910, and a new well in 1922. So they were slowly um, improving that system. And by the 1920s and 30s, Wapaka's downtown was busy nearly every day. Um, new asphalt roads were put in, modern curbs and sidewalks were added, and um, which helped with automobile traffic and stores, restaurants, car dealerships, which there were an awful lot of. Um, they saw daily and frequent business. Um, this photo shows um, South Main Street in 1939, and um, so you can see where Simpsons is, and then where the other piece of Simpsons is today was a car dealership, and that was a um, Dodge car dealership. And then so then there's Simpsons next to it. Then there was another restaurant next to it called Bratwurst. And then, um, and then further down, there's a hardware store right next to it. And then this picture, same year, but shows you the, or two years before, I should say, shows you this, the opposite side of the street on South Main Street. And um, another car dealership. So there's Wapaka Motor Sales. And um, they sold Chevrolets. And then the building next to it that's under construction is where the Woodpile Foundation is, or was most recently the Chamber building. So that was under construction then, and that actually at the time was the Wapaka County Post Office. So the newspaper ran out of there. And then one of the few businesses too that still remains on Main Street from these early years was um, is Hurdle Monuments, which is the little building right next to the one under construction. And now today it's called Twin City, Twin City Monuments, but the building looks the same. This photo of North Main Street um, is from the second block and it's from 1939. And you can see a number of neat businesses along, along there. The News Depot, there's a printer, the Adler Theater is down a little bit. Um, but one thing I wanted to note, and you can't really see it, it's the fifth building down, is Esberg Photo Service. And a lot of the photos I'm showing you tonight were taken by Henry Esberg, who had a photo um, a photography studio on North Main Street. And so this photo obviously was taken by him as well. And, um, and we have his photos and um, his negatives over at over at the, um, at the Historical Society. So new stores began to appear downtown, and including another department store, which was Atkinson's. And in 1937, Maynard and Laureen Atkinson renovated and combined two storefronts there. It was a Gamble's and an Arcade Tavern. And um, they combined it into one store, and this was taken at Christmas time in 1937. And this is at um, 117 and 119 North Main Street. And Atkinson's was a huge success right away. They sold clothing, fabric, accessories um, for men and women, and they kept it going until Maynard died in 1952. 
And then in 72, the Atkinson family sold the store to Charles Gum, who opened his and hers. And then after just six years, he went bankrupt. And um, then this building later had um, Stu's home interiors, embellishments, and then most recently, it's now Northern Home. And it looks very similar in the inside still. Um, so department stores weren't just on Main Street, too. I wanted to mention um, Glover's, too, on Union Street. So Glover's opened in 1920 originally, and it was um, actually opened as a harness shop, and it was in a building that is now where the Chase, former Chase Bank building's parking lot is. Um, so they started there, and then in 1922, they moved to the building on the left, the little one on the left, and um, on the corner of Jefferson and Union Streets. And then um, he, they opened a hardware store there, and in 1933, after a short hiatus, um, Glover opened a hardware store and a grocery store. And in 1938, they added a dry goods section. And then those businesses were all connected in the inside, from what I understand. When Louis Glover died in 1954, then he split the grocery and the dry goods store between his two sons. And then that operated until about the 1960s. And then it was sold to Clinton Ballard and called Ballard's V Store. And then that store closed in 1970. So pharmacies and medical offices were also a common site on Main Street. And I just briefly, briefly wanted to mention the Drevis Candy Kitchen because um, it's got a neat story with it too. And so this was at 111 North Main Street, which um, most recently would have been I&I &I Printing, um, and now sits empty between um, Lucky Tree and Shea Posh on North Main Street. But um, George Drevis opened the candy kitchen in 1911. He had come from Greece, and he opened it with his brother. And they had homemade goods, or homemade candies and fruit. And um, their brother Angelos, he was just 16, he came from Greece and he was gonna help at the candy kitchen left Greece in 1912, um, got to New York, and couldn't speak any English. So they literally pinned a sign to him that said he was going to Apaca, and he traveled all the way from New York to Apaca and met his family here and worked at the candy kitchen. And um, both of them, Angelos and George, went into World War um, II, or World War I, rather, and um, George ended up dying of influenza during World War I, and Angelos was set, sent back because of a disability. So George, uh, Angelos, and then his brother that was still here, opened back up the candy kitchen. And then in 1920, they actually tore down the original building and then built what is now at that location and, re and named it Wapaka Candy Kitchen. Um, then Angelos and his wife and their three children, they operated the store. And it became a popular place for kids to come after school. Um, the theater was right across the street, so people would come after a movie. And, um, you can kind of see it there. In 1952, several um, changes were made, and one of them was that George Drevis, Angelos' son, um, went to pharmacy school, and he opened it as a Rexall drugstore then. And um, so you can see the Rexall sign there in the picture, and this picture is from 1974. And the Rexall drugstore opened um, until February of 1991. It was operating there, and they closed after 80 years of business. And um, like I said, it became a Gateway Realty Company, then it was I&I &I Printing, and then now it has sat empty for a number of years. So I wanted to mention, too, that entertainment was a big thing on Main Street as well, and people in the 20th century had more money to spend on um, movies and games and just act entertainment. So numerous buildings downtown had bowling alleys and pool halls. This bowling alley was um, most likely at um, 112 North Main Street, where Touch of Glass is now, and they had a bowling alley on one of the lower levels there. The Dane's home here actually provided musical vaudeville and community entertainment for quite a few years in the, in the late, 19, in late 1800s. Um, the, there was an opera house on Jefferson Street that burned down in 1904, and the Dane's home kind of became the Dane's home opera house. And so they hosted events, and that went on until about 1920. And the Dane's home did not allow alcohol, so um, this type of event was a perfect fit here, the home in the church against the saloon. And that's from 1908. So then in 1920, the palace was built. And the palace was built by A.M. Penny, who was one of the largest potato growers, dealers, and shippers in Wapaka. And he built the palace as a monument to Wapaka. And he built that for $100,000. So the picture on the left is the original palace. It opened in, on October 4th, 1920, and it featured the stage production of the Old Homestead, and then the, the theater later added um, silent films as well, but it was known for its stage productions. 
And um, then in 1932, J.P. Adler leased the Opera House, and then in 38, he renovated the building and bought it. And he chained, turned it into a movie house. And so the picture on the right is, is, shows the, Adler, or the, the palace after Adler made the renovations in 1939. And he equipped it with the most up-to-date um, movie equipment that you could, you could buy. And the theater at one point had 744 seats in a theater stage inside. And I don't know if I made it clear, but that was on West Fulton Street where Farmer's State Bank is. So the Opera House also had a restaurant. And so for many years it operated with the theater, or with the palace, and it was a local hangout. And then this photograph is from the 1920s when it would have still been associated with the palace. Later years it was sold and it operated as a restaurant, but on its own. So this photograph is from 1941 and shows the restaurant in a shoe shop next door there in that building. All three of those buildings were torn down in 1960 and um, Farmer State Bank built in that spot. And from what I understand, the projection booth for the theater sat right one floor just above the um, door for Farmer State Bank on West Fulton Street. So they, that wasn't the only theater in town. The building, this building was built in 1921. It was actually originally built as an armory for the Wapaka National Guard. And um, the Wapaka National Guard moved their practices in 1926 actually to this building here due to safety concerns at that one. And um, the Wapaka, the new theater, was opened and it actually hosted wrestling events early on. It was a very popular um, activity here in town. Eventually, J.P. Adler, who had bought the palace, bought this one and he w um, showed movies and he had discount nights um, and showed movies that were just not in direct competition to his other Eventually, he let the lease run out on this and then it operated just a few years more as a theater. Um, but he actually let the lease go because he wanted to open a new theater, the Rosa. And so he built the Rosa Theater in 1948, and um, that theater was built on a vacant lot between um, the buildings there. And the theater was named after his wife. And the photo on the left shows his wife in the middle and then his two daughters on either side. And then the souvenir book on the right was a given that night as a souvenir along with a, a rose um, for all the people who came on opening night. So the theater wasn't actually done that night when it opened in, um, in uh, 1948, but um, people in Wapaka were very excited to have a brand new movie theater. And then that, building, or that theater ended up being, that stayed with the Adler family until 1972 when um, Paul Rogers bought it and he was a worker for Adler for many, many years. So they bought all of Adler's theaters and today um, it's still owned by Paul Rogers and Scott Horn. So the 1930s though, they were having these, some of these businesses growing. Um, it was a relatively slow time for Wapaka. And the thing that did grow here were the public works projects. And that was mainly because of the federal government's work programs. The Work Progress Administration had several projects here in town and could provide funding for hiring unemployed workers. And so, Wapaka experienced several projects um, through the Works Progress Administration, including a new elementary school, a sewage plant, athletic fields, and then this water fountain here, and this postcard here. And um, I like this postcard a lot because you can see some men sitting on a bench outside on South Main Street, the kids at the water fountain. You can see the old tourist booth that used to sit on the corner of Fulton and Main there. And um, you can also get a glimpse of some of the, the um, businesses on, on South Main too. The IGA store was there, the Olson's Pharmacy. Farmer State Bank was still on the corner there. Um, so you get a good glimpse. And this, this postcard was from the 1940s. The post office was also a project of the Works Progress Administration. And it shows um, that in 1938 during construction. So following World War II, Wapak experienced um, quite a few changes through the city. Um, the city developed a comprehensive rec program, and they also established zoning ordinances in 1957. The city hall and fire department building were then torn down in 1968, that had been this building out here. And a new city office building was actually built next to the armory, and then the fire and police facilities moved into the armory. And the armory is pictured here in 1930 um, when it's under construction on Washington. So while Wapak is industrial base, we didn't talk a lot about that, but their industry was 
growing here in Wapaka, the city's commercial space changed dramatically. A large amount of the department stores closed or declined. Some new stores opened on Main Street, but others established kind of niche markets here in town. Um, this picture is from the 1950s and shows some of the buildings on North Main Street, so the Badger Paint store, um, Stratton's is there, um, Haybigs men's clothing store is down a little bit where Lucky Tree is today. Um, so you get a glimpse at just some of those um, smaller businesses that people still really appreciated um, and patronized here. Um, at this time, too, social and fraternal organizations, their memberships were declining, um, especially the women's group, because women were, women were going back into the workforce. And industries changed. The mills that we talked about briefly, lumber, grist mills, that wasn't, um, that wasn't as popular or as economical here in Wapaka anymore. And the economy began to focus more on large businesses. So you have the Wapaka Foundry, which was actually started in 1871, building new. And we had businesses like Filter Materials, Delicious Foods, Moromatics, Wicker Knitting Mills. They were all opening locations here in town. And so as the years went by, downtown businesses began losing business to nearby communities, especially when they were building those larger shopping malls and large discount stores. Even the newly built Wapaka Woods Mall was pulling some business away from the downtown area here in Wapaka. But tourism started to pick up about that time, and so tourism became a major industry for the downtown businesses. This picture is again from 1974 and shows Wenzel's hardware store on the corner there, the bakery, Stratton's is still there, Wapaka Savings and Loan. Um, so some businesses started to pop up that were more geared toward um, the tourist population too. The neat thing, though, about Wapaka, too, is that a lot of those older businesses, a number of them have continued throughout the years. And, um, and on Main Street, Stratton's Drugstore, which we've mentioned, Simpson's Restaurant, and several others, including Fletcher's Jewelry, which is pictured here. And they opened in 1937, and they've continued on Main Street ever since. Another business that um, is now gone, um, on the side streets was um, the Wapaka Cafe, and those businesses that built real community following and also a tourist following. I know when we moved here, people would mention, oh, I've been to Wapaka Cafe. And so it just, it really resonated with visitors as well. Um, this is from a picture from 1995, and um, you know, ever since the Wapaka Cafe moved out, a lot of things have tried to kind of move into there, but nothing has really stuck as much as the Wapaka Cafe did. So around the end of the 20th century, too, a lot of buildings saw their demise, too, in Wapaka. And um, the fire station was torn down here, like I said, in 1968. The old Delavan Hotel, which was on the corner of South Main and Union Streets, where the old former Chase Bank building is, um, that building was torn down, as was the building behind it, then in 1975. And then Homestead Savings and Loan um, built in its place. Another building that was torn down was the big courthouse on Courthouse Square. So for many years it had been such a central location in Wapaka and um, that building was torn down and, um, in 1993 and made room for a new city hall and a new library. So it, changed, it really did change the look of Main Street in many ways when that building was torn down. And the outside of the buildings, which I haven't talked about much, but the outside of the buildings really has changed a lot over the years and really a lot in recent years. Um, the outside with the signs and the different awnings and paint colors and buildings um, have looked very different in recent years. If you look back in a long time ago, um, things didn't change as much um, with the outside of the buildings. And then in about the 1990s, there was a renewed focus on Main Street to start to look back at that history and kind of restore that historic integrity to the buildings downtown. And that continues today. So there are many, many more stories, and it was really hard to fit everything into a presentation, and we could talk about all sorts of different businesses and things downtown. But one business I wanted to mention is um, Main Street Marketplace. Um, you talk about a business that's been around and has seen numerous changes on Main Street over the last um, nearly 30 years. Um, it's Main Street Marketplace right on the corner of West Fulton and Main, and Kent and Bernadette Pergorsch have owned that business, and Kent is here, and he just wanted to mention a little bit about kind of the changes he's seen on Main Street and what we can expect maybe in in coming years. Thanks, Tracy. Um, yeah, that's kind of a, we had a good picture of a story. Um, I think I was 
kind of before we had them renovated back in 1995, we had uh, all the brickwork redone and had the building repainted. And since then, we replaced windows and done a lot more work on it. When we took it over, it was, uh, it was at a changing time in downtown Wapaka. I guess kind of what I'm thinking about as Elizabeth Tracy here is how we are always kind of living history. And as, as we approach next year, we're going to be rebuilding Main Street. And as we're going through a changeover of businesses in downtown Wapaka right now, uh, we're seeing a whole new kind of era in downtown Wapaka, and we're a part of that history. So someday, not too long from now, 30 or 40 years from now, when either we're older or we're not around anymore, this will be the historic times. These will be kind of the good old days. Stepping back to uh, when we started Main Street in 1987, um, my wife was working at City Hall, and she was a utility bookkeeper, and she really did not want to be a utility bookkeeper. And uh, she was walking by Main Street Marketplace one day. At that time, it was an uh, antique store and a fudge store, and there was a for sale sign on it. And um, she says, how about if we buy Main Street Marketplace? And uh, it took about six months, I think, before we finally bought it. It was just that one storefront at 103 North Main. Um, and then over the years, uh, we expanded. Uh, in the corner there was Broadway Optical, and uh, they moved out to the mall, and we took over the building and went to the building for a couple of years. And then the Wenzels uh, sold it to us, and uh, we started renovating it then. But it was a whole different downtown Opaca then. Um, I can't see a little bit of light here. A little bit of light. A little bit of light. My wife and I were going through some of the uh, businesses that were in downtown Opaca when we started out as Main Street Marketplace. And it was really kind of, um, kind of interesting things that I had forgot about. And some of you might remember this. Um, and some of these businesses, and some, you know, maybe not, depending on how long you get around. Um, Culligan's Bakery was downtown. We had a bakery in downtown Wapaka. Uh, Schultz Brothers was still in business downtown here. Uh, Drevis's were still, had their farmers team downtown Wapaka. Abe's were still here. This is all since we bought our store. Um, Stu's Furniture, uh, Meredith's, and Verna's dress shops were downtown. Junction Clothing Store. Uh, Katie's Diner, Wapaka Cafe, of course. The White House uh, Book and Office Supply Store across the street from us. Um, Passport Travel was downtown yet. Um, Hanson's TV was right across the street in this building right here before they moved out and built their new building. Uh, Knudsen's Flooring was down uh, next to the theater, which is now part of the theater. And the Montgomery Ward Store uh, was downtown. So it's kind of hard, hard to believe that it's only been 30 some years since all those stores were downtown, and now it's kind of like a whole new era coming into downtown. Um, I grew up in Manawa. My parents had the shoe store in Manawa. I grew up over the shoe store, so I have a real affinity to downtowns. Um, some of the fixtures in our store now were built by my grandpa in the 40s for my parents' shoe store, and now we're still using them. So they've been used in, in our family and retail for almost 75 years. Um, but yeah, it just, it's just kind of amazing when you look back and think about how much things have changed in just the last 30 years. And uh, it won't be long, and Main Street Marketplace will be one of the longest, or will be the longest business in that building since it was built 145 years ago. Um, so time really flies. But I guess I kind of appreciate where we are right now in downtown Wapaka. Um, the way it looks now, in two years, it's going to look a lot different. A lot of new businesses coming in, and I think we're going to see a lot of new businesses coming in, a whole new uh, revitalization of downtown.